Shalom. Giving all praises to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rachahakurash. Double honors to the apostles, the elders at Great Millstone who rule well. Peace and salutations as always to the elect. And I wanted to bring out a few more um, ordeals or uh, articles dealing with news and prophecy as we link the things that are happening worldwide to the Holy Scriptures um, for the purpose of uh, edification to the elect, the remnant um, who are uh, awakening in these latter days according to prophecy, which uh, is causing a stir in the planet Earth. And um, as we always bring out everything that's happening, you know, it's all predicated upon biblical prophecy, which the men of the Lord, you know, the servants, the prophets are here to speak the very end of Babylon, the great in this beast system into existence and the ushering in of the kingdom of heaven. As we always let you know, this knowledge, wisdom and understanding is the beginning of the kingdom. All right. As the victory under the blood of Yahweh Shai is through this testimony, which gives us a mindset to not look at this present world as the end all be all. So ultimately, Satan has no victory over the elect. OK, all of the uh, enchantments and everything that he's throwing out and all of the confusion and the scare tactics and, uh, you know, his uh, plans to uh, to ultimately use the resources of the earth, you know, to pull everyone into this uh, new world order, you know, as he uh, moves forward with Satan's agenda. We, the elect, Lord willing, we're of that number, but the scriptures does tell you to put on the elect. So while we know we were called, we don't know if we were chosen, all right, but we still have to have the mindset of victory and not defeat over all of the things that are coming. You see, when you read Revelation, the 15th chapter, it speaks of victory over the beast, his image and his mark. All right. So we have nothing to worry about as long as we stick to the script and follow in the straight gate. All right. As uh, Babylon, the great, this new Egypt dwindles. Um, as you can see, we have here on the screen off of uh, CNBC. Uh, dot com the u.s army which america is the new egypt all right the u.s army is struggling to find the recruits it needs to win the fight over the future because there will be a fight in the future as a uh, prophecy uh calls it armageddon and this is why all of the troops are being gathered over in the middle east this is why russia is leading a uh, charge, you know, of rebellion against the West. This is why many nations are joining themselves to Russia. This is why you have the BRICS nations looking for um, ways to operate outside of, you know, the uh, petrodollar and build its own economy and beast system. And you even have countries within the beast system, which is the EU and NATO, who are looking at America sideways. As a matter of fact, before we get into this article, um, we can start here because these are a few articles that I had and I wasn't able to bring them out in yesterday's News and Prophecy or earlier today I posted it. But uh, it says, Putin warns of unpredictable decade ahead. Okay? And um, it says... The Russian president has predicted greater uncertainty as the era of unipolar Western dominance has come to an end. OK, and that's all headed by Babylon the Great. OK, and um, what you see happening over in uh, Europe is uh, that the sanctions that were put, you know, on Russia it's backfiring and the economies are collapsing. This is how you know it's being done on purpose. But it's all going to lead to biblical prophecy being fulfilled because these devils in the elite of this world view themselves as the most high. OK, to where they control both sides, but they're going to find out. When it's all said and done that they were also controlled and being used by the most high himself. 
for prophecy's sake. So it says here, Russian President Vladimir Putin, which as you notice, Russia is big in the news. All right. Over the last seven years, eight years, you've noticed a uh, charge. All right. In Russian uh, balking against the West. Well, this is biblical prophecy. Ezekiel 38, as we always go into, you know, uh, Isaiah 13, Jeremiah 50. OK. And uh, other scriptures speak to Russia hidden under, you know, names like, you know, uh, Gog and Magog, which if you look at an ancient map, it's in the area of Russia. OK. Uh, which those are Japhetic lands that were taken over by the Edomites. All right. Uh, it's also called the Medes in other prophecies, because if you look at the ancient uh, Medes empire, it's in the region. All right. Of what was known as the USSR, which was disbanded. OK, around the 90s. But um, as you can see. Gog and Mega Russia is getting back in that Soviet spirit which the Soviet spirit, all right, always constantly, um, you know, balked at the West. And you remember the Cold War, which it was never over with, you see. But the bottom line is this, the weakened state Russia was in, you know, which NATO was created to combat, you know, the USSR and its power. And eventually, you know, um, NATO, so say one, you know, the uh, dominance of the West, you know, and, and NATO pretty much has um, went through the four corners of the earth. All right. But um, as prophecy is being fulfilled, Russia is getting back in that Soviet spirit. And see, NATO and the USA, Babylon the Great, in this beast, they think they're dealing with that old, weakened, docile bear but this is a revitalized bear he's out of hibernation okay and uh <laughs> prophecy is being fulfilled and when you look up the uh symbol symbolism of the bear okay it deals with rebirth you know and another thing that has been rebirthed in this 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 age is uh the spirit of the soviet union OK, and now they have uh, major players joining unto them. All right. But the whole concept is the end of Western domination, the end of Western alliance. Babylon, the great, you know, being utterly uh, destroyed and taken out of the way. All right. As it's in the way of, you know, these particular nations doing their thing. All right. Even particular allies of America, you know, um, are um, balking against her. If you remember at one of the uh, EU meetings where uh, where Trump was in office, the uh, EU president was basically like, "You America, you should be careful how you talk to your allies because you don't have many. So we're living in a time where um, America is being weakened and prophecy is being fulfilled where all of these various different nations are going to have an evil eye towards America in preparation of an all out assault on her, which we'll get to those things in biblical prophecy. All right. Now it says uh, we are standing. All right, let's read it here. It says Russian president Vladimir Putin believes the world stands at a uh, precipice precipice of a tumultuous decade. All right. That will bring the most danger in us unprecedented dentably in several generations as western hegemony inevitably draws to a close all right and western hegemony all right uh let's look up this word hegemony so you can understand it but basically it deals with dominance in the west you know via unrighteous decrees the sword you know and ultimately prophecy have dominated okay because, you know, ultimately the Heavenly Father put them at the forefront and the West deals with Babylon the Great. So hegemony means leadership or dominance, especially by one country or social group over the others. And that social group are the biblical Edomites, the country 
that heads it all is the revival of Rome, which is Babylon the Great, along with its vassals, all right, the EU, all right, and also NATO. That makes it a beast system that has uh, led and dominated the entire planet Earth. All right, but we're living in a time where they're divided, all right, in uh, their particular alliances, agreements, and deals, which is going to lead to war. All right, war is inevitable. We are standing in a historic frontier, Putin said on Thursday. Let's see here. He said at a uh, Valdai discussion club's annual meeting in Moscow. Ahead is probably the most dangerous, unprecedentable, and at the same time important decade since the end of World War II. All right. Putin rebuked the West. See that? For playing a dangerous, bloody, and dirty global uh, geopolitical game. He said that the U.S. and its NATO allies helped to entice Russia-Ukraine conflict, and they did. Because Ukraine uh, was going to be added to, I believe, NATO or the EU. And pretty, uh, you know, and, and, and that breaks, uh, you know, uh, an agreement that they had. All right. That NATO wouldn't, uh, uh, you know, progress anymore towards the east, towards Russia. And if NATO has an ally pretty much. In Ukraine, if, if Ukraine is joined unto NATO, then that means a threat is posed to Russia right in its front yard. And that was a promise that they broke. And this is something that they're not talking about in the news. They're bringing up all of this propaganda, which you have all of this pray for Ukraine, uh, this, that. Well, what about those Palestinians over there? Anyway, what the hell with all of them? But it just shows you how hypocritical these devils are over here in the West in their media. Okay, they got you all sad. They got you American uh, uh, people angry at this guy, Putin, which this guy ain't did nothing to y'all. Now, they're all the devil, and they're all part of something uh, very wicked and evil. All right, and, you know, they're all being used for the Lord's purpose, but what in the hell has Putin did to you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans here in America to where you now have an evil eye towards him. And those people over in Ukraine hate you niggas. Go over there to Ukraine and, and, and try to walk up the street. Okay, they call you uh, monkeys. Yet, through propaganda, they've, they've gotten you to turn away from what the, the wickedness they did to you. And now you have an evil eye towards Putin. Which you don't know what the hell is going on, man. All right. Anyway, you hear what he said? He rebuked the West for playing a very dangerous, bloody and dirty geopolitical game. He said the U.S. and its NATO allies helped to entice the Russia-Ukraine conflict while at the same time stoking a crisis over China's sovereignty in Taiwan to enforce its global dominance. And that's all they do. They're trying to ultimately uh, 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 set up their world dominance under the guise of propaganda okay it says i have always believed in the power of common sense and i will do so so i am convinced uh that the sooner or later the new centers of multipolar world and the west will have to embark on an equal dialogue about our shared future now the the, the future for all of you edomites is captivity all of your powers are going to be taken away. Uh, but as you can see here, Babylon's uh, uh, world dominance, all right, is, is, is being balked at. It says, and the sooner that happens, the better, which means these two are getting ready to collide. Okay. It says the Russian leader noted that when Moscow laid out the security concerns that would need to be addressed to avert the Ukraine crisis last December, NATO cast the proposal aside, okay? And again, these are the things that aren't being talked about in mainstream media. They're making this guy out to be the bad guy when what, what the hell you think Russia's going to do, all right, if, if, if an ally of yours 
okay, is um, being set up in their front yard. They're going to defend themselves. You see, and now all of these sanctions have been put on uh, uh, Russia. Okay, to not deal with them and getting their oil and, and stuff like that. And now what's happening? These particular European countries are being what? Crippled. And then you had that ordeal with that pipeline, that Nord Stream pipeline. You see, which is responsible for, you know, um, oil getting to particular European countries. They're still trying to figure out who did that. All right. And there's many ways you can go with that. It could be Babylon. It could be uh, Russia doing it on their own to, to, to inflict war and, and blame. It, it can go any way. But ultimately, the devil is at play. It says it is not going to be possible to sit this one out. Whoever sows uh, the wind will reap the storm. The crisis has taken on a truly global magnitude. It affects everyone and we should not. Uh, entertain any illusions otherwise okay now prophetically let's go to uh the book of uh let's go to the book of ezekiel the 37 chapter because as russia has these talking points all right you see the BRICS nations um and uh you see various different nations being aligned with them uh in their uh council all right, and their purpose. Give me one second here. Okay, this is the book of Ezekiel 38 and 1. It says, And a word came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against Gog in the land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshech and Tubal, and prophesy against him. All right, that's uh, over in the area of Russia, Armenia, you know, uh, Turkey. Okay, um, these are going to be some very, very um, important places um, in end time prophecy. OK, and who's over there? OK, uh, the, the, the Russians. OK. And uh, it says and say. And thus saith the Lord, behold, I'm against thee, O Gog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, and I will turn thee back and put hooks into thy jaws. And I will bring thee forth, all right? And ultimately, um, hooks or wood are put into the jaws to tame wild beasts, all right? So Russia would be out of control. Russia is going to be in a, in a very uh, warlike mentality. And the, the Lord, you know, is uh, taming her until the right time, okay? And he says, I will bring thee forth and all thine army, horses and horsemen, all of them clothed with all sorts of armor. And that is the various different nations that have aligned themselves with Russia. Okay. And it's happening right before your eyes. And the mindset again, as we see in this article, is a uh, evil eye towards the West. Okay. And you're going to even have a lot of these EU countries. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> pretty much. Balk. At Babylon the Great behind those particular uh, sanctions. As a matter of fact, we'll get to that in just a minute. It says, Son of man, set thy face against the, uh, Gog in the land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tupal, and prophesy against him. And say, thus said the Lord God, Behold, I am against thee, O Gog, chief prince of Meshach and Tubal. So the Lord ain't with you Edomites, period. The Lord ain't with Russia. It's not Russia's. It's going to be beamed up and with us. No, the Lord is just using them for the purpose of prophecy. This is very, very important. The mindset uh, that they're pushing towards the, the, the West, because all of these nations are down with it. And you're starting to see nations that never before would have spoken a word against Babylon. Now, all right, uh, stand up to her. As the scriptures say, let the weak say, I am strong. All of these nations are being what provided with nuclear capabilities. All right. And the, and the funny thing about it is Babylon, <laughs> which the Lord put a reprobate spirit on Babylon, or is responsible for a lot of these missiles being in uh, circulation. So they've they've funded their own downfall. See, the Lord put a, a, a very, very stupid reprobate spirit on Babylon. 
The scriptures say the, pr the pride of thine heart have deceived thee. It says, I will turn thee back and put hooks into thy jaws and bring thee forth all thine army and horses and horsemen, all of them clothed with all sorts of armor. All right. A great company with bucklers and shields and all of them handling swords. Persia, OK, which is Iran, Ethiopia and Libya with them. And if you look in the news, if you look at what's happening, all of these particular countries are aligning themselves with Russia somehow, some way. OK, uh, Ethiopia has allowed Russia to set up naval bases, all right, in their territory. There was a deal made, okay? All you have to do is look it up, okay? So there's all manner, if they, if they, if they train their military, all right, we'll allow you to set up bases over here. That's an ally. So they're forming their own beast system. Uh, Iran, Libya with them, all of them with shield and helmet, helmet. OK, Gomer and all his bands in the house of Togomar and the north quarters and all of his bands and many people with them. The, the, the area of Turkey is eventually going to, you know, because Turkey plays both sides, but Turkey is going to side with Russia. OK. It says, be thou prepared for thyself, thou and all thy company that are assembled unto thee and be thou a guard unto them now prophetically. Russia is going to be a guard to all of these nations, okay? And when you look up Revelation, the 13th chapter, <clears throat> and, see, and, and see, it's not going to just be Babylon they come up against. They're going to come up, there's going to be friction with them in Israel, which is going to, that's going to draw Babylon out. The scriptures say the least of the flock shall draw them out, okay? So it's going to be friction with Israel, <laughs> we, you know? We already know Iran and them have friction. Russia has friction with them as well. All right. And who always comes to the aid of uh, of Israel? One second here. America. OK, America always comes to the aid of Israel. All right. And Ezekiel 38 is giving you an outline to a, a, a rebellion against Western dominance. And against those small hats. All right, let's get this real quick. Least of the flock. Okay, so draw them out. This is the book. Let's see here. Of Jeremiah 49 and 20, it says, Therefore, hear the counsel of Yahweh that he have taken against Edom and his purposes. He's going to make them have a brawl for it all, all of you heathen. Okay? that he proposed, proposed against the inhabitants of Teman, and that's Esau, okay? Surely, and, and that can be linked to Babylon the Great, surely the least of the flock, which is Israel, shall draw them out. Surely he shall make their habitations desolate with them. So Israel is going to be a desolation. The thing about that is it's going to be rebuilt, but Babylon is going to be uh, made a desolate wilderness jeremiah 50 and 45 therefore hear ye the counsel of the lord that he hath taken against babylon and his purposes that he hath proposed against the land of the chaldeans the land of the chaldeans is babylon the great okay and the modern uh, uh the chaldeans are the witches and warlocks that run this place surely the least of the flock shall draw them out Surely he shall make their habitations desolate with them. Okay, and the least of the flock is Israel. Now all you have to do is just type in. <clears throat> Israel-Russia conflict. You could also look up Israel-Iran conflict. Okay, and uh, those are, those are uh, talking points. Those are things that are happening in the earth. Give me one second here. See that? The pressure on Israel to help Ukraine against Russia. See? They're going to eventually get involved, which is going to, that's going to inflame war. See? Ukraine says Iran's help for Russia should push Israel out of neutral stance. So if Iran helps Russia, all right, Israel is going to get involved. So we, we see all of these things taking place, man. 
All right. Russia warns Iran, which we just read in prophecy that, all right, the uh, Iran is going to be linked with Russia. So that's going to draw uh, these small hats to get involved, which you can look up history and things that, that you know, how they're all involved. Israel's neutrality allow Iran to enter Russia-Ukraine conflict. So we're seeing it all happen, basically. You know, we're, 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 we're witnessing biblical prophecy and Israel's going to be involved. But as you can see, Russia... Okay, the bear, as you see here, the end of the vision, the end of the beast is going to end with the bear. And I saw Revelation 13 and 2, and the beast, which I saw was like unto a leopard. It starts with the Greeks and his feet, whereas the feet of a bear. Now, when you look up this term bear real quick. <laughs> All right. It's Arctos. The Greek word is arctos, a bear. But when you go to the uh, the uh, root word, okay, what does it say? To be possessed of unfailing strength, which they are. To be strong, to suffice, to be enough, to defend. See, to ward off, to be satisfied. So they're defending, just as we uh, read. Okay, they're being a guard to these other nations. Okay, prophetically. Okay, Russia. As you can see, Persia, which that's Iran, Ethiopia, Libya. And all you have to do is look up how Russia is linked with these particular countries and you'll see. OK, and it talks about later in this chapter how Russia is going to have an evil thought. OK, and they're going to come up against Israel and Babylon. The great is going to be laid desolate because it's going to lead to an all out assault on Babylon. The great. So going back to where we were in this uh, article Putin is basically saying the way that the West and NATO has dealt through all of these years is wicked all right and unless things change it's going to be war and we know <laughs> the pride of Babylon's heart has deceived them and they're not going to budge or fold on anything man okay and not only is Russia cursing out Babylon for their ill dealings. They're, they even curse Russia and Iran is known to curse out America for what they did to Jake. How they treat uh, uh, treat uh, uh, you Israelites. <laughs> OK. It says almost half. Uh, let's see here. In any case, Putin said the historical period of the West's undivided dominance over world affairs is coming to an end, citing a 1978 quote by Russian writer Alexander. All right. He said the West has a blindness of superiority. The, the pride of their heart have deceived them. Almost half a uh, century later, the blindness. All right. He spoke of openly racist and neo-colonial in nature. Has become simply up, especially after the emergence of the so called unipolar world. Okay? <laughs> and this is from an article Ukraine, a test range for Western arms, defense minister. Okay, so the West has its hands in a lot of wicked and evil and is being called out. So, meanwhile, you know, these particular nations are anteing up, you know, they're, they're calling their men to become more warlike. They're training. OK, over here in the U.S., the U.S. Army is struggling to find the recruits it needs to win the fight over the future. And we'll read the bullet points. It says the U.S. Army fell short of its 2022 recruitment goal. All right. By 25 percent. All right. The morale is down here. See, over there in these particular countries like Russia, uh, China, you know, the, the, the their, their uh, men are being galvanized to defend themselves. But over here in America, all right, every, everybody's through. Okay, it says, and recently cut its projection for its total force for this year by 10,000. 
All right, U.S. Secretary of Army Christine Wormuth said that the at the CNBC work summit on Wednesday that it's become harder for the military to complete for recruits. So you know what this is going to uh, lead to a draft, All right? A draft, which over in Russia they had a draft. <laughs> they were talking about uh, uh, having a draft. You got to have people breaking their legs. All right, but it's not as bad as over here in Babylon. So just imagine when they implement a, a draft over here in Babylon the Great. It says, like all large employees, a tight labor market is a factor, but the health issue of young Americans, including obesity. Okay, this is the the wealthy nation that dwelleth without care. People are, 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 are overweight, and the misconceptions about serving after 20 years of war are big issues to overcome. People have seen how, uh, you know, veterans are treated. And that's one of the things that the Lord hates, according to the scriptures, is a, a man of war that suffered poverty, okay? Because here it is, you have these particular, uh, the, the, the I mean, 80 to 90% of the people you see on the side of the road, you know, begging for, you know, money, they fought for this country. And, you know, the, the psych meds bugged them out. And they, they're now they're in a destroyed state to where they're on the side of the freeway. Um, begging. OK, which that grieves the Lord's heart. You should ultimately uh, if you fight in a in a in a in a war for a particular country, that country should take care of you, especially if you got your minds all messed up, your your, your limbs are all messed up, you in all kind of pain. You should be compensated for that, but not over here in America. America tell your ass you 14% disabled, <laughs> give you 14% of what you should get, which what you should get is, 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 is ain't even enough to support yourself. So 14% of that, it only makes it harder, man. Okay. We, and, and, and this is, uh, and we have brothers that's in this truth who fought in this devil's military, and they deal with all manner of ailments. Okay? And this man is the complete devil, man. Sirach 26 and 28, there be two things that grieve my heart, and the third maketh me angry, a man of war that suffered poverty, all right, and men of understanding that are not set by, and one that returneth from righteousness to sin, the Lord prepared such as one for the sword. So how America treats its troops, all right, is one of many reasons why the sword is being prepared for you. And people see that, all right, and they're like, nah, <laughs> I don't want to go through that. I don't want to lose a toe and, a, and an arm and go through all of these, you know, crazy, gruesome, you know, scenes and, and have them in my mind and be shell-shocked and messed up. Nah, I'll pass. I don't want to fight in the military, all right? Women or when you hear about women getting drafted, what do they say? Well, I want, I want to cook. I want to be, you know, feminine again. So nobody wants to fight in this military, okay? It says the U.S. Army is spending more than ever on technology to replace an aging military infrastructure. See, they've been so uh, focused on offense that they didn't work on their defense. And now we're living in a time where these nations, Russia, China, you know, North Korea, they 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 have uh 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 offense offensive systems that can't be detected. There was a point where Russia came over here and turned around and said, Man, we <laughs> we we could have uh moved on you you uh devils. You see? But what? Their their technology and their infrastructure as far as military is aging. Okay, and this is a part of prophecy. Let's get Isaiah forty seven and one. Come down and sit in the dust, O virgin daughter of Babylon. Sit on the ground, there is no throne, O daughter of the Chaldeans. For thou shalt no more be called tender and delicate. You see, you're sitting in the dust. As a matter of fact, let's get uh, the book of uh, Jeremiah 51 and 6. Flee out of the midst of Babylon and deliver every man his soul. Be not cut off in her iniquity, I mean, and repent, separate from this place. For this is the time of 
Yahweh's vengeance, he will render unto her a recompense. Babylon have been a golden cup in the Yahweh's hands that made all the earth drunk. And the Lord gave Babylon the power it had to do what it did throughout the earth. But it's only going to lead to war. You see, according to prophecy, their ill dealings are going to what? Uh, uh, galvanize these nations to fight back. The nations have drunken of her wine, okay, including taking on that dollar, that debt. And the nations are mad. The nations are pissed off. The nations have gone crazy. All right? All of them, man. You just had these particular uh, 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 Moabites, these Chinese, have a, a situation where hella people just died doing some Halloween ritual. Now, why are you following Halloween? Because you're following after the West. That's just one uh, uh, instance of how the, the, the wine of Babylon has pretty much polluted every damn thing okay give me one second here it says babylon is suddenly suddenly fallen and destroyed how for her take balm for her pain if so she may be healed so this place ain't gonna be healed why would the lord heal this place this place wasn't created to be healed so we're living at a time where this place is being weakened and prepared for the slaughter give me one second here it's being prepared for the slaughter Straight up. Okay. We would have healed Babylon, but she is not healed. Forsake her and let everyone go into his own country. And the people, these people's mindset is to separate from Babylon. These nations are starting to see the uh, decrepit uh, uh, state and how aligning yourself with Babylon doesn't really work. Okay. It only leads to uh, confusion, pain. Your daughter's being whored out, family structure being broken up, confusion, and you're not sufficient to run a nation under uh, the, uh, the, the, the vibration of Babylon. Okay? For her judgment has reached unto the heaven and has lifted up even unto the skies. Now, as we go down, let's see if we can find it here. Let's see. Yep, as a matter of fact, let's start at 27. Set ye up a standard in the land. Blow the trumpet among the nations. Prepare nations against her. Call together the nations of the kingdom, kingdoms of Arawat, all right, which is ultimately um, uh, Turkey. Many, okay, that's uh, um, Armenia and Ashkenaz, you know, over there, uh, I believe, which some say uh, Germany, some say, you know, amongst the French. All right. But these European nations, which as we're um, going into news. Let's go here. OK, as we go into news, these different European nations, as you can see, tens of thousands of Suzek protesters. All right. Which Suzek is a part of the EU. Um, it says, um. Protesters gather and pray to demand the end of sanctions against Russia withdrawal from EU and NATO. You see that they're 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 calling for withdrawal from the EU and NATO. Now, who's at the center point of why they want to withdraw America? So these various different European nations are pissed off um, and the beast is ultimately going to hate the whore. According to prophecy, let's get that in the book of Revelation, the uh, 17th chapter. OK, these various different alliances and agreements are now being what revoked. All right, which is going to lead to doom. This is our uh, Revelation 17 and 16 and the 10 horns. All right, which ultimately the 10 horns represents the 10 common markets or the vassal states. All right, which the EU started out as 10 nations, but now. All right. More have been aligned unto them, but it represents the vassal states, the vassal subordinate countries that align themselves with Babylon the Great to make it a beast system, just like Rome had vassals. OK, and the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, these shall hate the whore and shall make her desolate and naked and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. For God hath put it in their hearts, their minds to fulfill his will and to agree and give their kingdom unto the beast, 
until the words of the Most High shall be fulfilled. So they all agreed to give their kingdom unto the beast. Turkey plays both sides. They're not like a direct, you know, um, part of the EU, but they enjoy the benefits. You might you might as well say they are, but they're able to freely operate and kind of, you know, do their own thing too. But as you can see here, these various different beast EU nations are going to what? Hate the whore. Let's look up this word, hate the whore. Because the whore is leading to them being dried out. They shall hate the whore. The whore is Babylon a great messio to hate, to pursue with hatred, to detest. Okay? To love less. All right? And the love for Western dominance, the love for the West period is waning. Years ago, everybody looked at this as the beacon of light. But as you can see here, let's go back here. You have tension. All right. Let's read a little bit of this. Of this. See if they got a video. Nope. It says um, tens of thousands of Sezek demonstrators have taken to the streets of Prague, of Prague, of Prague the capital city of the Sezek Republic, to demand an end on sanctions against Russia for direct negotiations with Moscow regarding gas supplies to end the country's energy crisis. So Russia <clears throat> is responsible for how a lot of these nations were getting their gas, but now there's sanctions on Russia. All right, with, starting with Babylon is basically telling these EU nations who gave their kingdoms to the beast for the purpose of Babylon. Now Babylon is saying, well, you shouldn't trade with Russia. We're going to put sanctions on Russia. And that's leading to these countries absolutely being destroyed. Even over here in America, the sanctions they put on Russia, that didn't work out for the good for uh, uh, you Americans. Things got worse. Okay. Let's see here. The protesters also call for resignation of the prime minister uh, for early uh, and for early elections. 70,000 protesters, man. It says the protest was organized by Sezek Republic first, an organization that opposes Sezek membership in both the European Union and NATO and wants the country of nearly 11 million to be militarily neutral <laughs> you see that and they're going to be militarily neutral because they eventually know that they're going to strike or help to strike babylon and the lord is just preparing it as a matter of fact let's get the book of daniel the second chapter real quick daniel the second chapter and uh rome the 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 the, the, the final you know, the feat of the vision that was saw in the dream that Daniel broke down for the king it ends with Rome. OK, Daniel 2 and 40, the revival of Rome and the fourth kingdom shall be as strong as iron. All right. Because it is military as iron breaking them pieces and subdue, subdue all things. That's how America was able to uh, get what it got. And that's a blessing given unto them by Isaac himself. You're going to rule with the sword. And have the fatness of the earth. As iron breaketh in pieces, all these it shall break in pieces and bruise. And it took down the different nations. That's what Rome did. Now we know Rome fell, but Rome was revised via the Renaissance. And whereas thou sawest the feet and the toes part potter's clay and part iron, the kingdom shall be divided. But there shall be in it the strength of iron. So they still have military strength. OK, but that military strength is going to be used to fight Babylon because Babylon is in the way for as much as thou sawest the iron mixed with miry clay. So they don't agree economically. They don't agree politically. They don't agree uh, monetarily. All right. But they still have the strength of the sword. This is the Edomite. All right. But the Lord is what uh, 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 dividing them. All right. On these particular uh, agreements. It says, and as the toes of the feet were part iron and part clay, so the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly broken. And that's where you see the EU, NATO, and Babylon are great. It's partly strong, but it's broken in the fact that they don't agree. 
All right. And you're going to have many of these different nations of the EU side with Russia at the end of the day. And whereas thou sawest uh, iron mixed with miry clay, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men, but they shall not cleave one to another. So these various different agreements have been made. OK, they've went amongst these different nations and been able to, you know, dominate, buy out governments, uh, uh, get these particular nations to be uh, uh, down with their agenda. All right. But they're not going to cleave to one another, even as iron is not mixed with clay. And this is where the Lord is getting ready to set up the kingdom. Um, but they shall not cleave to one another. The word cleave. The Bach to cling. They're not going to cling to one another or they're not going to stick to one another. OK, they're going to disagree in a lot of ways. And a lot of these alliances and agreements that have been made are ultimately going. They're not going to be joined together. OK, <laughs> they're, 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 gonna, they're not going to follow after the uh, guidance of Babylon the Great anymore, which this is uh, Obadiah. OK, the book of Obadiah goes into this. We'll just get to the point. Obadiah verse seven, all the men of thy confederacy have brought thee even to the border. The men that were at peace with thee have deceived thee and have prevailed against thee. They that eat thy bread have laid a wound under thee and there is none understanding. And the bread is that dollar, that debt. And most of these nations go through Babylon the Great, you know, for the purpose of trading. OK, and things like that. But now they're looking for a way around this whore. Shall I not in that day, saith Yahweh, even destroy the wise men out of Edom and the understanding out of the Mount of Esau? So this is what's happening. The Lord is putting everything in place. All right. For these uh, for them to all turn on one another and eventually uh, 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 strike. Now, going back to this article here, because we'll bring out a video real quick. Um, the U.S. Army is spending more than ever before on technology to replace an aging military infrastructure from artificial intelligence to new fighting machines moving 1980 tanks off the battlefield but the secretary of u.s army says the nation's risk falling behind in a race against china if it can't recruit um the nation risks falling behind in the race against china if it can't recruit enough americans in the service to be trained on how national defense is being remade for future conflicts and future conflicts are coming. We can develop all the most high, uh, the, the, all the, the most high new tech, uh, weapon systems like we are working on right now. But if we don't have the kinds of talent motivated in the, uh, talented, motivated individuals to use those weapon systems, we won't be able to do what we need to do. OK, and people don't want to fight in this military and the people that are in the military, they're just there to get their college tuition paid for. Actual combat is not on their mind. They get scared. OK, so things are getting bad. Nobody wants to go. Uh, everybody's big as hell, eating donut holes and, and, and uh, you know, dipping, uh, dipping their honey bun in some milk. And they don't meet the qualifications. Jeremiah 51. Um, and let's read 27. Let's finish. It says, appoint a captain against her, which is Russia. Cause the horses to come up as rough caterpillars. It's getting ready to get bad. Prepare against her the nations with the king of the Medes. And again, I did a lesson on it showing you how this show. This is uh, Russia. All right. All you have to do is go to an ancient uh, Medio Persian or Medes Empire map and you'll see that it's in the area. All right. Of the, the, the USSR. So in prophecy, this points to Russia, the captains thereof and all the rulers thereof and all the land of his dominion. And they're coming after uh, America's dominion. OK. And the land shall tremble, tremble and sorrow. For every purpose of the Lord to be per performed against Babylon. To make the land of Babylon a desolation without an inhabitant. And this is what's coming. And this is how you know this ain't talking about in 
uh, the uh, ancient Babylon, the Neo-Babylonian Empire ran by the Assyrians, you know, the uh, Nebuchadnezzar and all of them. This is speaking of a future Babylon, which this letter that we're reading was a letter Jeremiah wrote to the uh, the um, the captives at Babylon to be taken and read to them. That's at the end of this chapter. It goes into that. But when you read it, it has nothing to do with how the Babylon that they were in captivity to was destroyed. So this is speaking unto us about this Babylon. The mighty men of Babylon have forborne to fight. They have remained in their holds. Their might have failed. They have become as women that have broken her dwelling places. Her bars are broken. And as it says, and what's that in Isaiah, the 19th chapter? <laughs> okay. And, and, and just wait till actual physical assault hits Babylon. All right, Isaiah 19 and 16, and that day shall Egypt be like unto women. So the men are all, you know, alphabet out, soft, you know, the, the Ralph Tresvant sensitivity vibe. You know, meanwhile, Russia and China are calling their men to man up and balking against the West, saying that alphabet stuff ain't going to get it. We need our men to be men. O over here in Egypt, though, everything is just through. The Lord put a spirit, a perverse spirit, so that when war really breaks out, America's going to be through and it shall be afraid and fear because of the shaking of the hand of the Lord of hosts, which he shaketh over. And that's prophecy being fulfilled, man. OK. Nahum 3 and 13, which just is speaking of Nineveh. All right. But Nineveh is America. All right. When you tie it together. All right. That which is then is now behold, thy people in the midst of thee are as women. <laughs> Thy gates, the gates of thy land, they don't have that warlike mentality. Uh, the, the, the gates of thy land shall be set wide open unto thine enemies. The, uh, the fire shall devour thy, devour thy bars. Now, when you look at what happened with ancient Rome, they fell because they were spread out too thin. And their defense became weak. And that's what's happening with Babylon the Great. They're all over the planet Earth doing this and that. They're working on all of this offense but their defense when you go into it is uh absolutely terrible they're wide open for a strike they're drunk all right and the heavenly father is going to uh, uh use these various different nations to come up against this place man so the mighty men of babylon they don't want to fight the people in babylon aren't they don't want to defend this place they're 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 eaten they're depressed they're worn out see and now they're in a, a situation where they have a recruiting crisis. So they're just going to come out with a uh, with a uh, draft. OK. And the Heavenly Father is going to have to protect us, man. You can read, you know, the rest of that. Let's uh, go to a few of these uh, videos real quick and then we'll get a few more things and close out. Um. This is a video off of off grid farming. Um, this is called What is About to Happen in the Coming Months, according to uh, Damien Galleron, translated by Kelly. Just a few things that we can uh, tie to everything we're going into. Let's just listen. And we need to really be preparing ourselves now. The situation in Europe now is very complicated. Putin has said that he's going to cut off the gas to Europe. This is really big news, and I hope, it, I hope people understand it. This is huge. This means that Europe is going to freeze with the cold this winter. Then we have the situation in the Ukraine. Well, we all know that that's just a smoke screen. We all know what's happening. And what is actually happening is that the big powers are preparing for an attack on Russia. But Russia will defend itself. What really worries me is the autumn in the Northern Hemisphere. Because the information that I have at the moment, which comes from very high ranking people, and this information tells us that at the very end of September, into October, everything starts to fall apart. First of all, we will be looking at the financial collapse. And then of course, we have the food scarcity that will be setting in around the same time. I'm always talking about the problems that there are going to be with the food supply. And I have to keep harping on that. 
But I also want to state that there, there is so much food in the world that it could feed all of humanity right. a number of times over. It's just the elite. But this has is a created shortage. This is not real whatsoever. This is created by them. However, we see the prices of foodstuffs going up everywhere. In most countries now we witness this. So why is this actually happening? It's happening because the governments, the various governments, are telling the producers and the manufacturers of different types of foods that they scale back or cut production completely. They have done this in order to increase the prices and to create a greater crisis. The governments themselves have been told to do this. Salak, you give me one second. So basically, this is a manufactured shortage that they're using to crash the economies all right, the global elite. and bring forth uh, <clears throat> order out of chaos. The whole idea is to produce an artificial famine and in that way to kill off the people. At the same time, of course, they will be killing off the people that have taken all the different types of jabs. And we could add to that a big long etc. All of the ways of killing people. This is what they want. In other words, we now find ourselves in the middle of a panorama that is very, very complex. And this goes back to the, uh, the, the GR we talked about in the last News and Prophecy. And this goes into the... Um, the Malthusian, the Malthusian uh, uh, theory. All right, and they're 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 ju they're going to be justified in doing and bringing this famine because ultimately there's not enough resources. Which how can, how in the hell can you be on the planet Earth and there not be enough food to feed the people? You think the Heavenly Father didn't understand what he was doing when this vessel was created? No, again, these things are being manipulated. So that they can uh, have a have a, a reason to bring in that order. Now, again, we brought this out yesterday. And everything that we just brought out with Russia and these various different, you know, uh, Ukraine, it all plays a part. OK. Um, we brought this out yesterday. You know, Revelation, um, you know, six, you know, you have the black horse, which represents you know, captivity and how this devil is going to use the earth resources, all right, to uh, bring forth order, all right? Uh, a measure of wheat for a penny and three measures of barley for a penny. And when you look this up, all right, it's going to take a day's wages to get uh, 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 an am amount of food that will sustain a man for one day, meaning they're going to uh, ration out your food. That's what that's talking about. We have lessons going deeper into it. But verse seven says, and when he opened up the fourth seal and I heard the the, uh, the the voice of the fourth beast say, come and see. And I looked, behold, a pale horse and the name on him that sat there on was death and hell followed with him. OK, and the scriptures say he is as death. This is you Edomites, the rulers and power was given unto him. All right. Over the fourth part of the earth to kill with the sword and with hunger and with death and with the beasts of the earth. So this is what ultimately um, they're going to use the sword famine. OK, the beasts of the earth, which is all the Lord. To kill off a lot of people. So they can fulfill one of their plans, which was on those guide stones to ultimately get the population down. Let's see if we can get a precept to this. And see, death is going to be swallowed up in victory. And this is how he's able to have power, you know, through these left hand means. But the elect are going to overcome. Yep, it's going to be a lot of death. This happened in ancient Babylon when they brought their famine. Well, this is going to happen again in this Babylon of great Jeremiah 16 and 4. They shall gri die grievous deaths. They shall not be lamented, neither shall they be buried, but they shall be as dung on the face of the earth, and they shall be consumed by the sword and by famine, and their carcasses shall be meat to the fowls of heaven and to the beasts of the earth. It's going to happen to a lot of you Israelites. 
Okay, let's keep listening. I was talking a few days ago to a military man of extremely high rank, and I told him that NATO and the US would be able to do absolutely nothing to Putin, but in actual fact that Putin will tear them apart. He told me that the global elite are completely mistaken in believing that they can beat, that they can win against Putin. But he says that they themselves, they fight to the death between themselves. These are the very people, he said, that are now destroying our world. But even among themselves, they are fighting to the death because they can't even agree on what policies to follow. <laughs> we have Joe Biden, for instance, as president, making statements that Russia won't even last five Here we go, boy. Minutes. We also have the head of NATO, Stottelberg, who's, who think they'll be finished with Russia in a few hours. There definitely is something wrong with all of these people. Do they not understand that Russia could finish all of them in six or seven hours? <laughs> Russia has the capacity at the moment to might wipe them off the map in just a few hours, and they don't seem to realize that. So this is all part of the crisis that I'm talking about. An economic crisis, famine, the state of the church. Personally, I situate all of these different aspects in the critical months of October and November of this year. That is when I see them happening. And it is precisely in these two months of October and November that we come to the end of, an, of another cycle of blood moons. So what's the panorama there for? Obviously we could, we could sin a little bit as regards being pessimistic about the whole thing. However, some time ago a friend of mine said that a pessimist is a person who is very well informed. The question here is not that we're trying to be pessimistic, but the, what we're trying to do is to be realistic to see what's really happening to understand what's happening on the ground. So the big question really for us is, what are we going to do when confronted with all of this? And it's here that we have to go, we have to go into our own, our inside. We have to strengthen our spiritual life. We have to strengthen and pay close attention to our prayer lives. We have to make a very generous offering, or surrender if you like, of our hearts and our minds to Almighty God. You can listen to more, but um, that goes for us too. Now they, you know, into their guy. We're praying to Yahweh Bashimi Al Shai to uh, ultimately be brought, you know, out of these times. But the Lord is doing all of this because it's all centered around the controversy of of what happened to His people. Let's get the Book of Joel, the third chapter. All right, Joel, the third chapter, and the uh, first verse it says, "For in those days." All right. And at that time, when I shall bring again the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem, all right, the, the northern and southern kingdom, I will also gather all nations and will bring them down into the valley of Yahweh Shapat, showing you we have the name of the Lord, Yahweh's judgment, Yahweh's decision. And I will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage, Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations and part of my land. So all of this is happening for the purpose of the Heavenly Father bringing forth World War III so you can all you nations can have a brawl for it all. You see? Now, let's see here. Because America's through. America's uh, completely out of there. We read through this a little bit. I mean, we got the, a few points out of here. <laughs> let's see here. <laughs> I think what that shows she is disappointed in the fact that the army has been retaining soldiers very very well and exceeding exceeding it retention goals as a part of getting the message out about the army as a career choice I think what it shows 
All right. What that shows is that when people come into the army, a lot of them want to stay in the army and they wouldn't uh, want to stay, obviously, if they're having mental issues, she says. So I think we just need to talk to the parents about the reality of what's it, what it means to serve in the army today. And we're serving in Yahweh about Shimon Shai's army. And yeah, it comes with a lot on the mind, <laughs> you know, but these people ain't prepared for war, man. We're fighting a spiritual war, though. While recent criticism over the politicization of the military could be impacting the perception of joining the army, Wormut said that when she speaks to soldiers across the globe, I don't hear from uh, that from them about politics. I think where it may be more of an issue is with the parents who may be watching the news and kind of seeing how the army sometimes can be turned into a little bit of political football. Basically, they're, they're sending these soldiers in particular places to invade, to destroy, to steal, to lie, to kill, and have these people fighting wars, all right, uh, that, that ain't, you know, really justified. Okay? And I think the way that we uh, navigate uh, that it is just to continue to stress to young Americans and parents and other kinds of influencers that the army is a political and when you join the army you swear an oath to the constitution you swear an oath to satan you don't swear an oath to either political party you don't swear an oath to a specific president you're swearing an oath to protect the uh, the the country she also weighed in on the conflict between russia and ukraine and the risk of nuclear conflict saying that is unlikely Russian President Vladimir Putin follows through on the threats to launch a nuclear attack. All right. There is a lot of uh, concern given Putin has escalated the conflict. See, the West really has escalated the conflict. But again, they have this propaganda war machine that, that is able to put poison into people's minds. All right. Certainly there is a concern, but she said that despite Putin's threats to use such a weapon against its ex-Soviet uh, neighbor, Ukraine, it is still an unlikely event. Okay? So, the Babylon's struggling. Let's look at a few other things. All right? <laughs> There's an article. I saw the American dream is dead. All right? Dead. The American dream is dead, man. All right. <laughs> you know, I, I guess I can read through this on another, you know, lesson, but this is hilarious, man. You know, the 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 you know, the dream is dead. Okay? I grew up believing in the American dream. I felt that if I studied hard, got good grades and participated in extracurricular uh activities, I would have access to an affordable, high-quality college education. I believe that if I entered the workforce armed with an undergraduate degree and a good worth ethnic, I would kind I would find the kind of job that would lead to a well paying career and financial pros prosperity. I believe that in America anyone who worked hard enough could accomplish anything they set their mind to. Unfortunately for my generation, that dream is dead. All right, and what does the scripture say about dreams? I had it pulled up here. Let me get that real quick. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, this place is sitting in the dust, man. All right. Ezekiel, uh, Ecclesiasticus, Sirach 34 and 1. The hopes of a man void of understanding are, are vain and false, and dreams lift up fools. The American dream lifted up you people's minds. Now you're being found out to be fools, and where are you going to go? You're not stable in any knowledge, wisdom, or true understanding, all right? You're that wealthy nation that dwelleth without care, all right? Now the mindset of the average American is is, is, is stuck on stupid, man. Whoso regarded dreams is like him that catcheth at a shadow. <laughs> all right, imagine trying to catch a, your, your shadow and follow it after the wind. You see? we we'll just jump to here. Let's see here. Verse, verse 7, for dreams have deceived many, and they have failed that put their trust in them. 
All right. This is why you got to lean on your Hawabashim Yasha, especially you Israelites. Now, this is an Edomite who uh, who understands that the, the dream is dead. But Jake still thinks that uh, th this is it. You know, you have degree. I have a degree. OK, I have a master's degree that, that man in debt. Now, I, the only thing I can do is lean on your Hawabashim Yasha. OK. The Lord has blessed me with, you know, a, a you know, a, a career to ultimately be able to su to sustain myself, you know, my family and, and, you know, the brothers with daily bread. OK, but other than that, we looking to get the hell up out of here, man. This is a this is a damn nightmare. I remember the Apostle uh, Gabar went into how the American dream is a damn nightmare. OK. And this is this is a corporation owned stock, lock and barrel by the elite. OK, and they're getting ready to uh, try to cash out on this investment and move on <laughs> to the next. All right. The next thing. This place is through. All right. Let's see this. Judge tells New York City to rehire workers fired for refusing the juice. It's another thing you trust in these devils. This is why the scriptures tell you. OK, get the book of uh, Sirach 12 to never trust your enemy. All right. Remember that 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 dude from ISUPK who went and got it, put it on Facebook. Yeah, I got to get my keep my job. man. If you trusted in the Lord, you would have fared off better. And who knows what that dude is now. All right. You know, all of those dudes from 20 something people from IUIC died because they were giving counsel in the beginning to go ahead and do it. See, that we're living in a time where you got to step out on extreme faith, man. All right. Don't bow to the image of the beast. It says, Sirach 12 and 10, never trust thine enemies. OK, for like as iron rusted, so is his wickedness, though he humble himself and go crouching. And that's what he did. Take this. Drink this juice. Yet take good and beware of him. And thou shalt be unto him if thou hast wiped a looking glass, and thou shalt know that his rust have not been altogether wiped away. This dude is wicked. Set him not by thee, lest when he have overthrown thee, he stand up in thy place. And that's what he wants to do. Okay? <laughs> Neither let him sit at thy right hand, meaning you trust him. You open up to him. All right? lest he seek to take thy seat and thou at the last remember my words and be pricked therewith. And a lot of people were pricked therewith. And that was just a trial to the, the, the true pricking he wants to do. Who will pity a charmer that is bitten with a serpent or such or any such as come nigh wild beasts? So the, we, we don't pity you, Jakes. Now, we do believe that a lot of those who took and uh, ultimately are in a bad state. Some of them could be healed if you repent. Okay, but this is a damn shame to go through all of that. And now you're seeing all of the stuff in the news telling people, oh, my bad. Oh, we didn't mean it like this. Oh, we didn't do the research. Oh, it was never meant to stop. You know, all of this crap, man. And now they're even talking about giving people who, who lost their jobs back pay. Okay. <laughs> Judge orders NYC to rehire a group of workers for refusing uh, juice activator and give them back pay. But the, 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 the state is fighting back against that, man. These people are completely wicked. Okay? These people are completely wicked, man. Let's see what we got here. Yeah, we talked about this a little bit yesterday, but, you know, th this is what's on the horizon. I'll just say that, all right? Um, national digital ID clears congressional hurdle amid fears it can be politically abused. Of course, it will be abused. <laughs> They'll have the ability to shut down and they're already doing it in China. OK, they have that system in China and they're able to shut off particular goods for people to buy. Based upon your social credit score, that's already happening. When that happens in America, you people are going to realize, damn, we are screwed. 
Okay? Because they're going to link everything. And this is where we're going to have to uh, uh, separate from this place and lean on Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, man. Okay? Let's see. Coupled with facial recognition technology and other identifiers, Solomon warned that digital IDs have the capacity for geo location of identifiers in other words tracking citizens every digital movement okay and this is what they want okay which um is all going to be under the guise of this this uh climate you know control the the you know the ability to uh you know bring you help and aid to uh help fix the mess that they've made of the earth Okay, and that's uh. Let me uh go here, and I played some of this uh yesterday, but let's play a little bit of it here. I mean, I had a few other things, but pretty much the the guy here, you know, um, went into it. You know, just continue listening to this. This is a good video off grit desert farming. Um, guy who looks like he's out of a you know eighty nineteen eighty four time machine. Um. Paul, I mean, he he brings out some good information. Um, let's see how where we at. Yeah, I think that's enough. So yeah, check out more of this. Um, I just wanted to get into some news um, and prophecy. You know, um, basically Babylon the Great is uh, as we uh, went into is sitting in the dust, meaning uh, it's no longer being called tender and delicate. It's no longer in the uh, state that it was. Okay. It's no longer being called tender and delicate. Now the nations have figured out you're a whore, you're nasty, you slept with this dude, you burned that nation, you burned this nation. Dealing with you has become a complete uh, uh, terror for the nations, even your own allies. So as we're reading here, it's saying your nakedness is going to be uncovered. And where you're going is into captivity. Okay? You, uh, you did too much wickedness, man. It says, thy shame shall be seen. I will take vengeance and I will not meet thee as a man. The Lord ain't going to come back to this Edomite dominated uh, uh, rulership beast system as a regular meek lamb. No, he's coming as an angelic force. And you nations are going to try and fight against him, helping Babylon. And you and, and off from the fight you have with each other and lose. October 28, 2022. Guys, you're looking at the latest from the National Hurricane Center. And uh, there's a big wave moving offshore the U.S., moving out into the Atlantic. And both of these systems have kind of been created by that. Now, this one, it's 20% chance of development. It looks like it's going to drift into the North Atlantic. This one will be a little more interesting as we go through the next few days. 70% chance of development. The models are, are really wild right now. They're not really <clears throat> pinpointing anything. What it is showing that is that it may turn to the north because there's going to be a slight opening in the high pressure that's above the Atlantic. But then that pressure closes off very quickly and pushes it back south. It's, a couple of models are showing very weird movement for a hurricane, but we're kind of learning to expect that. Yeah, I didn't mean to click that, but we'll get into you know the uh, mass judgments that are uh, as well and uh get into some more news man hopefully I'll edify it um see if we can just read a few of the uh titles to end this off on uh blacklisted news but it's a lot going on outside of uh what's being shoved down your throat and the uh, propaganda they, they got going on. So, you know, I like to touch on these things too, but I do have a lesson I want to get into, you know, how, you know, they're using this Kyrie and Kanye thing, you know. Um, uh, Musk uh, neuters Twitter Ministry of Truth ahead of midterms. Oh, man, which they're about to pretty much regulate and police the Internet, Okay. On another level. 
matter if reference. Russia says UK Navy <laughs> blew up Nord Stream. London denies involvement. This Pelosi thing. Yeah, we got to tap into that too. This is a big mess. Okay. <laughs> oh, boy. The big tech companies are telling U.S. exactly where the economy is heading in 2023. <laughs> 2023. <laughs> Three. <laughs> you see that? We already read that. Yeah. Anyway. And I also like to check out uh, t- the tyranny one. But that's it. Hopefully, I'll edify. Lord will, we'll be back with more news. I just wanted to get these uh, particular stories out as well. Shalom.